a Portland Community College mathematics telecourse. A course in arithmetic review produced at Portland Community College. Using concepts of absolute value and oppositing, we wish to explore how to add signed numbers. But before we do that, let's try to intuit what the results of these will be by thinking dollars. For some reason, our mind has a way of seeing things in dollars that sometimes it doesn't see in pure number form. Now, let's also think that a positive number is a credit. A debit is a negative number. Now let's just think about this. If I have a credit of eight dollars and get a credit for thirteen more dollars, then I do have a total credit of twenty-one dollars and the credit is positive. But if I owe eight dollars and now owe another thirteen dollars, then it's reasonable that I owe, which is what negative means, a debit, twenty-one dollars. But here if I have an eight dollar credit and suddenly I owe thirteen dollars, then with this credit I still owe five dollars. So note what we're saying here. A negative plus a negative is negative, and a positive plus negative in this case is negative. But in this problem, if I owe eight dollars, then acquire a credit of thirteen dollars, then I'm I have five dollars to the good, or a credit. So here we added two unlike signs and got a positive, and here we added two unlike signs and got a negative. Well, on this part, there's no problem. Positive plus positive is simply elementary school arithmetic that we spent so much time reviewing. Now, here we added two negatives and we got a negative. We could ask, is that always going to be the case? And the answer is going to be yes. But notice if I add unlike signs, sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. But the absolute values, the numbers without the signs, notice I took the difference. The difference between those two, smaller from the larger, is 5. Same thing here. And so that ties us in to the rule that we're going to have in this lesson. By the way, our intuitions on these were correct. These are indeed the correct answers. First part of our rule simply states that if you're adding the sum of two positive numbers, the answer is always positive. And if you're adding two negative numbers, the answer is always negative. So at this stage, before you get into algebra where some courses will prove this, we simply memorize it. When adding two negatives, the answer is negative. A couple of examples. When adding two negatives, the answer is negative. Then we just think I add their absolute values, which is another way of saying old-fashioned arithmetic. And that would give me 63. So negative 48 plus negative 15 is negative 63. Again, the rule tells us when adding two negatives, the answer is negative. And then to simply add the absolute values, which is 3.7. So negative 1.3 plus negative 2.4 is negative 3.7. If I have fractions, the rule does not change. If adding two negatives, the answer is still negative. And now we simply add their absolute values, which is 3 fourths plus 1 eighth. And of course, that's plain old-fashioned arithmetic. Getting common denominators, I have 6 plus 1, or 7 eighths. So again, when adding two negatives, the answer is negative. Simply add their absolute values. Now, when adding a positive and a negative, or in short, unlike signs, the number is found by taking the difference between their absolute values 
the smaller from the larger. Then give it the sign of the number which has the larger absolute value. Some examples. If you're adding unlike signed numbers, you take the difference between their absolute values. Smaller from larger. So 15 from 20 is 5. Then ask of these two which is the larger. Okay, the 20 is. Then give it its sign. Okay, again, if adding unlike signed numbers, you take the difference between their absolute value, in this case the 3 from the 7, which is 4, then you ask of these two which has the larger absolute value. That's this one, so give it a plus. Now notice, with this we can determine the sign of the answer before we even do arithmetic. Okay, we ask of these two which has the larger absolute value. Well, this one does. Okay, the answer is going to be negative. Okay, then we take the difference, not this from this or this from this. The direction has nothing to do with it. The smaller from the larger absolute value-wise, which is 30. Now, it sounds like we're using a lot of unnecessary words, but let's see if we really are. Notice we said give to the answer the sign of the number which has the larger absolute value. Why don't we just say give it to the number which is largest? Well, as it turns out, this number is not larger than that. In fact, it's smaller. Now let's concentrate on that. In these two numbers, it's important to note that negative 70 is a smaller of the two numbers. That is, negative 70 is less than positive 40. Now, see, if you just look at that, you say, hey, 70 is larger than 40. That's true. But we don't have 70. We have negative 70. And surely, 70 degrees below zero is colder than 40 degrees above zero. This is a lot lower than that, see? And $70 in debt is having less money than $40 credit. 70 feet below sea level is certainly lower than 40 feet above zero. So don't confuse that number with that number. So when we were adding these two, we took the difference between their absolute values, which is 30, and even though that is the smaller number, it has the larger absolute value. So we had to say, give to the answer the sign of the number with the largest absolute value, and that gave us the negative. Now let's mix them up. If you're adding like signs, the answer stays the same. Then you simply add the absolute values, which is 12 30 seconds, which reduces to 3 eighths, so it's negative 3 eighths. This down here is simply my arithmetic to get ready for the absolute value of the answer. But the main theme here is when you're adding two negatives, the answer is always negative. On the other hand, if you're adding unlike signs, you're going to take the difference smaller from the larger. Well, in this case, they're both the same size, and the difference is zero. And, of course, calling it plus or minus is irrelevant. Zero has no sign. So we got a rather peculiar situation here. So please note this. In general, any number, and I'll let A stand for any number, plus its opposite is always zero. That's a fairly obvious fact. But in algebra, this becomes a rather important fact in many situations. So the sum of any number and its opposite is always zero. Now, a whole pot full of mixed numbers. Let's see if we can determine the signs of these before we even add algebraically. If you're adding two negatives, the answer will be negative. If you're adding unlike signs, it may be negative or positive. So you ask, which of these two has the larger absolute value? Well, this one does. OK, give it its sign. Again, if you're adding unlike signs, ask which of these two is the larger absolute value-wise. This one is. Okay, give it its sign, which is implied to be positive. Again, 
adding unlike signs give it the sign of the larger absolute value which is this one and that is negative now if you're adding two unlike two like signs you're going to actually add the absolute values 1.4 plus 2.5 which is 3.9 on the other hand if the signs are different you take their difference which is 6.2 now that might be a convenient way of remembering this. If the signs are different, you take the difference, which again is 6.2. It's just their signs that were different. But that's enough to make totally different numbers. If I owe $6.2 and if I have $6.2, those are certainly two entirely different situations. Now here again, if you have different signs, you will take the difference of absolute values, which is 7.6. So see, the algebraic part of this whole pot is in determining the sign. From then on, it's just arithmetic that we've lived with all of our lives. Many people will hesitate with a problem like this, but realize that hesitancy is not with algebra. It's with old-fashioned arithmetic, with which they're still somewhat uncomfortable. The algebra part is simply this. If I'm going to add unlike signs, I will give to it the sign of the larger absolute value, which is this. And then I will take the difference, smaller from the larger. Now, that's the algebra portion. Now, as I take the smaller from the larger. We are now away from algebra on our scratch paper doing just plain arithmetic. So I need common denominators, which is 6. This becomes 3, 6 by multiplying top and bottom by 3. This becomes 4, 6 by multiplying top and bottom by 2. But 4, 6 will not subtract from 3, 6. So I borrowed one from here. 6, 6 plus 3, 6 is 9, 6. 4 from 9 is 5. 3 from 4 here was 1. So my answer is negative, which I determined ahead of time. 1 and 5, 6. Now, you see, in all of this, it was arithmetic that caused us to pause, not the algebra. That was easy. So as you go from this course into algebra, don't let the algebra scare you. It's really quite easy. Let's try to press these basic facts into memory by a few what seems to be longer and harder examples, but which I think you'll find is not. The first thing you learn in algebra is when you're beginning to add positive and negative numbers is to note the signs. First, the first thing we looked at was the operations to make sure it is addition that we're doing. Then the next thing we looked at was the sign of the numbers being added. And notice in this particular case, every single term, that is numbers being added, are all negative. So when signs were alike and we were adding, the sign of the answer stays alike. See, that's a nice way to remember. When adding like signs, the sign of the answer is still like. Then you forget the signs and simply add the absolute values. But there's a particular shortcut here. If you remember your associative law of addition, which says if I'm adding, I can add the front two first or the back two first, or if I'm adding a long stream, I can add in any combination I wish. And the commutative law of addition says that if I'm adding, I may flip around and add in a different sequence if I wish. So knowing that, we would notice that here is a combination which absolute value wise will give me 10. See, I'm not even looking at the signs, just the absolute values. So there's 10, there's 20, there's 36. So the answer is 
negative 36. This was particularly an easy problem because of the setup. We were adding all negatives. In that case, we know the answer will be negative before we even start, and we just flat add the absolute values, which is grade school arithmetic. Very easy. But because we noticed that the signs were all alike and that we were adding, of course, that these were all positives, it'd be just as easy. It'd still be 36, but positive 36. If, on the other hand, I'm adding numbers which have different signs, then we have to stop and think. But remember, we said if the signs are different, we take the difference between the absolute values. Now, let me do this straightforward from front to back. Then let's back off and redo it and see if we can see a somewhat easier way to approach the problem. Now, the straightforward way says to forget this, and let's just do this portion first. So the signs are different. So I take the difference of the absolute value, smaller from the larger. So 3 from 8 is 5. Give it the sign of the one with the larger absolute value. That's plus. So this portion gets replaced by plus 5. Now I'm going to add it to plus 6. But now the signs are alike, so they stay alike. And I add the absolute values. OK, now I'm going to add that, plus 11, to negative 4. But now I'm adding unlike signs, so I take the difference. If the signs are different, we take the difference. Smaller from the larger, so in this case that would be 7. And give it the sign of the larger absolute value, so this is plus. And now I'm adding a positive 7 to a negative 2. Note first I'm saying that I'm adding. Always be sure that you're adding before you use this rule. I'm adding different signs. So I take the difference. And the sign will be the same as the one with the larger absolute value, which in this case is plus. And the difference between their absolute values is 5. So the sum of this long string of numbers we're claiming is negative five, positive 5 if we haven't made a mistake. That's a lot of work and a bit of bother. There's a shorter way. Through the use of the associative and a commutative law, which says if we're only adding throughout, I may add in any sequence I wish one by one. So I note if I identify the positive terms first, because they have like signs, I can just add their absolute values and keep the sign like. Then I identify the negatives. And again, because they have like signs, I will keep it like and absolute add the absolute values, which is 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 2 is 9. So now the positives gave me positive 14. The negatives added to negative 9. And I'm adding those two subsums. And now I'm only adding two numbers with unlike signs. This one has the larger absolute value, so my sum will be positive. But since I'm adding unlike sign, I take the difference, which is 5. And indeed, that's what I add here. That's much faster, isn't it? Let's do one more to nail that down. Because in fact, in algebra, when we're adding a stream of numbers, more than likely, it will not be just two at a time. It will be a long stream, all done at once. And this particular approach makes that rather nice and easy. First, we note, are we only strictly adding? And the answer is yes. Then we identify, in this case, let's start with the negatives, all of the negatives.
because we know the sum of strictly negatives will remain negative. Then we can forget the signs, which is another way of saying absolute value, and add the absolute value. So that's 13, 21, 27, 34, 36. Go back and double check. Let's add backwards to double check. 9, 15, 23, 26, 36. So we seem to be correct. Then let's identify the the remaining ones as being just positive. So that's 7, and 5 is 12, and 1 is 13. Now we only have to add two numbers with unlike signs. So we will take the difference if the signs are different. The negative 36 has the larger absolute value, so we know the sign of the answer will be negative before we even start. And we take the difference between the absolute values, smaller from the larger, and we get 23. So the sum of this long stream of numbers is negative 23. So that's a nice shortcut. But did you notice that there is a shortcut within the shortcut here? Did you see any particular pattern here? It centers around the idea that any number plus its opposite is always 0. Let's look at this problem once again afresh. An experienced algebra student wouldn't even begin until he'd scan this looking for combinations where one number is being added to its opposite. For instance, here is negative 7 being added to 7. So that's 0, hence we don't need it. Here is 1 and 5, which is 6, added to negative 6 which is 0. Until finally you notice in this case that all I have left are negatives, so I can simply add their absolute values and the answer will be negative. So this gives me 10, 13, 21, 23, and that was a little bit faster yet. So you see we had three approaches. One is simply to begin to add one by one, that's the slowest approach, but perhaps the most logical. Then the second portion, add all the like signs, negatives first, then the positive second, or vice versa. Then add those two subsums. Or, if they're there, look for combinations where I'm adding something to its opposite, and that will always add to zero, which eliminates from the sum right from the start. So always, begin, before you begin to work, stop and look to see if you can see any obvious patterns. If you can't, then once again, stop and look and get all of the like signs first, add their absolute values, and the other positive or negative like signs, add them second. Then when you're adding unlike signs, simply take the difference, give it a sign of the one with the larger absolute value, and bang, you're done. Very little work should make this to be a habit and very, very fast. That's very important to progress in algebra that you can do this mentally and very quickly. And please note, if we have fractions, the algebra is not hard. If you have difficulty with fractions, recognize it's with fractions themselves, not the algebra. The algebra part merely tells me that because the signs are different and because I'm adding, I will take the difference, either 5 6 from 8 15 or 8 15 from 5 6, whichever is smaller and larger. So I simply have to deal here with the absolute values, or if you will, grade school arithmetic. So I look at the two, and I know I have to find the two absolute values and I know I have to find a common denominator, which in this case is 30. So I have to multiply top and bottom of the first one by 2, giving me 16 thirtieths, top and bottom here by 5, 
giving me 25 thirtieths. Now we can see that in fact this one which came from here is bigger than this one. It's positive so my answer is going to be positive so many thirtieths. And we take the difference, the smaller from the larger, so 16 from 25 is 9. So again, please note, the algebra part, that is determining that I'm going to take difference, is easy. Once we have common denominator, which is grade school arithmetic, is simply a matter of asking which of these two were the larger absolute valued. And since we have common denominators, we need only look at the numerators. Then we take the difference, smaller from the larger, and that gives me my new numerator. And since this has the larger absolute value, its sign becomes a sign of the answer. Sounds complicated. Actually, it's not. The saying it is harder than doing it once you begin to really recognize the pattern and to use it. And of course the same with decimals. If you're adding a long stream, in this case since the first is negative, identify all the negatives because the sum of two negatives will be negative. Add their absolute values which is simply decimal arithmetic which in this case is zero point Ten. Is that correct? Did you check me? Then you add all of the positive sign numbers and of course that sum will be positive. Adding their absolute values 1.9 plus 2.3 is 4.2. Now that we're adding unlike signs or different signs we will take the difference and since the 10 absolute value wise is larger than the 4.2, the answer will take its sign, which is negative. Taking the difference between these two gives me 5.8. The question will come up as you do these. Will calculators work with positive and negative numbers? And the answer is yes. And in one of the next two lessons, we'll show you how to do that in case you want to come back and bring your calculator with you at that time. And the next lesson will be about subtraction of sign numbers. One might think that it's going to be harder, but in fact, if you can add sign numbers, subtraction will become remarkably easy because you've made addition easy. So concentrate on this first and don't come to the next lesson unless you've got it nailed down and it's comfortable and easy. I'll see you then. This is your host, Bob Fennell. Good luck.